Whoa. So sixty percent of pork is consumed in Asia. Oh, yeah. whoa! And also, it's yeah, right. Uh, and also, Asia is the fastest growing population in the world, and a lot of people coming out of poverty and consuming more of a Western diet, which means more meat. There is no meat that we consume in quantity that has had more research done on it than pigs. And that's because pig cells behave kind of like human cells. IndieBio funded us mid-July, took a biopsy that week. Two months later, we had prototype sausage, right? And so that means we can go to market much faster Ooh. than anything else. So took that fat from the, from the pig, and then essentially just bring that back, and there are stem cells in there. Yeah. So you take those stem cells and you start to multiply them. Cells undergo mitosis, right? So they just like divide and they'll, these will divide again, these will divide again. So they keep doubling. So the population just, just goes like this. It's exponential, right? Mm -hmm. So then the muscle, we have separate pork muscle and pork fat, and then we put them together and then we make a sausage out of it. Well, the, so the stem cells are what you proliferate. Yes, yes. So, so when we have this like exponential curve, these are all stem cells. Yes. Stem cells. And then we have like a giant, giant mass of stem cells. Yes. And then we divide them and then we induce this one to muscle and this one to fat. So in a very short time, we'll have that. We'll have an entirely fetal bovine serum free formulation. To kind of put it in context, the first time I tried our culture meat, it was uh, the week before the tasting and we had bought some pork at the store uh, and ground it up. Interesting. So that we could kind of compare it to what we were yeah. making, right? We wanted to make sure that we were making the same thing. Did and so you it was blind test it for yourself? Okay. So we had this busy kitchen, right? Okay. Uh, we had the containers of, of our meat and then the, the, the cell culture meat and then also the, the stuff from the store and the chef was cooking stuff up and, and so he handed me something and I ate it and I'm like, okay, that's bacon, I recognize that. So uh, can I try the stuff we made? He said, that is the stuff you made. I said, oh. And I was like, well, that's just bacon. Right? So it's not that it tasted like bacon, it was bacon. What are the new and interesting tastes that, you, that would be amazing? So right now we're actually speaking with chefs, food scientists, molecular gastronomists to say like, what's, what's actually difficult for you to do in a kitchen, for instance? Uh, and then can we go and actually do that to ourselves? And then you don't have to in the kitchen. You, it's actually, it comes out that way, tasting a certain way. We will be using 99% less land. Uh, we'll be using 96% less water. Um, 95% less greenhouse gases. We can make meat that's tastier, healthier, and more sustainable. What's up, everyone? We are back at Indie Bio Demo Day. We are with Brian Spears of New Age Meats. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for coming out of the show. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was great, great to be here. It. Appreciate yeah. it. Congratulations <laughs> on your epic pitch for New Age Meats on the epic company that you are building. And let's talk about this. For, and even prior to the actual company, I want to know you. How the hell did you come into wanting to get into sustainable sources of, sure. of food for yeah. civilization? How much time do you have? Uh, we, we have time. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so for me, I mean, my, my background is uh, chemical engineering and then 12 years of industry experience and research and industrial automation. So I worked for a company called National Instruments in Austin, Texas for four years. And there I did application engineering and then product marketing. And then myself and another guy started a company called Six Clear. And this company, we ran for eight years, and we had customers like NASA and Sandia National Labs, GE and Cisco Systems, and... And what were you building for them? Right, what was I building for them? So, <clears throat> in those cases, we would we kind of have the, the deep research customers like NASA and University of Texas and some Canadian National Labs, for instance. And in those cases, we would go into their research labs and work with some really brilliant scientists, and we would say like, hey, this is how you make your research faster, right? So you will put a bunch of data test points here, 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 here. This is how you organize the data. This is how you make data-based decisions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how the data can inform you on what you did, but then also what the next experiment should be, right? Awesome, um, awesome. So that would be on the deep research side. And then on the product side with customers like Cisco and GE, that's where we would do that same thing on the research side, but then also we would work with the, or the design and test engineers or scientists. Uh, and, and that way, what you want to do is you may want to make a prototype that you can not follow this old throw over the wall mentality, right? So there's this, this old paradigm of the R&D and the test engineer design a prototype and throw it over the wall to the existing, to, to the automation, to the production engineer, right? And the production engineer will go and make a million of these. But the problem is, is if it's sourced wrong, they throw it back over the wall and they fix it. They throw it back over the wall. This is really expensive and time consuming, right? So my whole career has been dropping, dropping that uh, barrier between the two. Exactly. Yeah. So 
you're asking about how I got in the movement. Uh, I thought it was amazing, it was exciting. So for me, what was your moment, yeah, <clears throat> to transition from that to yeah. the industry? <clears throat> so it was, it was really a matter of what I wanted to you know, do with my life. This was like the, the mid my mid 30s, so I'm 40 now. And I. You look so good. Thank you. It's flattering. That's what right. I mean, the, the camera's rolling. You wanna, I know, man. Oh, you know, they know. They I'm know. Blushing. They know my ten, my, yeah. ten, my tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> just, Here I am. San Francisco. Uh, man. <laughs> well, how did? How is that? <clears throat> damn, man. You're right? looking good. Yes. Good to stop. <laughs> okay. So, so continue. right. So this is my mid 30s, and it's a question of like, okay, is this my life's work? Is this what I want to do? So I'd, I've always been very social impact driven. I had started other nonprofits on the side, and always been. Uh, involved with them, but they, I found that they got the, the dregs of my time and energy, right? So whereas my business got all my time and energy. So for me, it was like, okay, why doesn't the, the business, why, why isn't the business the vehicle for how I see the world? Like my strong, strong conviction. Uh, not to say we did bad things, it was just a matter of we were working with technology and we had great customers, but we didn't have like the vision of how we want to change the world for the better, right? Um, so for that respect, in, in that respect, I say, like, hey, I need to go find what this is for me. So I sold out my ownership to my former co-founder. We're still in great terms. He's still running it. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great company still. Uh, so I kind of embarked on, I actually went on sabbatical for two years. I, um, What'd you do? Where'd you go? Uh, so I moved to Denver. I was in Austin. This is in Austin, Texas. I moved to Denver. Uh, spent a lot of time in the mountains, a lot of time like solo hiking and camping. Yeah. Uh, then I did some backpacking through Europe and Asia by myself. Uh, nice. Just thinking, trying to find where, where this three-way collision is of what I'm really passionate about, what I'm really good about, what I'm good at, and then what the world needs, or what's, yes. what's the market for my skills, yes. right? Uh, so I looked at a lot of things, and the more I came back to, or the more I found out about clean meat, or cell-based meat, or lab-grown meat, culture meat, whatever you want to call it, the more I was just really excited. Like, it's yeah. really cool. People eat three times a day across yeah. the world. I mean, that's, this, yeah. This is an excellent observation, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. So In my travels, huge. I've noted the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so you were like, I can yeah. get to ev almost every plate of food or as many plates mm -hmm. of food as possible. Sure. And that will be huge <clears throat> and sustainable. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Cool. Okay, so then what, what was the, how did you land on pork? You know, how does, how does that happen? Because nobody in the market, I think, was doing it until you started. At that time, right? no. Yeah. No, so okay. the, I mean, one, you could say, well, it's, it's pretty compelling because it's the most consumed animal in the world, right? It, so it, more than chicken? More than chicken, yep. So there's like a million chickens per hour die in the U.S. So that's that's, that's true, crazy. but in the pig, world, pig is the pig, biggest yeah, Asia, in the world. So 60% of pork is consumed in Asia. Oh, yeah. whoa. And also it's, yeah, right? Uh, and also Asia is the fastest growing population in the world. And a lot of people coming out of poverty and consuming more of a Western diet, which means more meat, whoa. right? Uh, also, like that, that's compelling enough, but then also yeah. the fact that there is no meat that we consume in quantity that has had more research done on it than pigs. And that's because pig cells behave kind of like human cells, right? Um, so if you think about like, what have we done a lot of research on? Well, humans and mice and rats and dogs and chimps, but we don't eat any of those. Mm -hmm. But the overlap is there on pigs. Mm. So that means that we can, we can not have to do, sp or we're not have to spend time doing fundamental science again. Mm -hmm. We have like a lot of published research on the protocols, on um, the, the, media, the cell lines and such. And that's kind of evidenced by the fact that, uh, as yeah. I saw in the, I said in the pitch, IndieBio funded us mid-July, took a biopsy that week. Two months later, we had prototype sausage, right? And so that means we can go to market much faster Ooh. than anything else. Okay, tell <clears throat> us about the cell biopsy. Mm -hmm. What part of the pig are you taking and then how do you make those cells replicate? Sure, yes. yeah. So if it's right there, right, right across the rib. Right, oh, in yep. the, okay, across the rib. Across the rib like this. Okay, yep. Yep. okay. So we had some, uh, some fat there. So took that fat from the, from the pig and then essentially just bring that back and there are stem cells in there. Yeah. So you take those stem cells and you start to multiply them. Yeah. And so one of the slides there I show what were what the stem cells. What do you feed it? What do you feed it to get it to multiply? Uh, it's called cell culture media, which is basically a nutrient broth, right? Okay. So it's like amino acids and minerals and things like that. And then there's also what we call growth factors. Yeah. Growth factors are proteins that will make the cell grow, right? The growth factors. So we make those from our, from our glands, right? So like in our body or from the animal's body, yeah. they'll make those. So if we're taking them out of a body, they're taking cells out of a body, they don't like that, they wanna die, right? Yes. So you need to keep them alive. Yes. And so you, you need to give them things that kind of replicate what the environment was in the animal's body. And, and then from the, how does, it, how, does it, how does it grow to become a pork sausage? Mm -hmm. yeah, what do you do to make it a pork sausage from that Sure, point. yeah, so there, there are two stages. So there's the proliferation stage and then the induction or differentiation stage. 
So in the prol proliferation, mm -hmm. that's where you're taking those stem cells and you're multiplying them. So part of my you know, story earlier was we took those stem cells and we multiplied them and multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. So they're just, they're dividing and doubling, right? So if you remember from high school biology, cells undergo mitosis, right? So they just like psh, divide and they'll, these will divide again, these will divide again. So they keep doubling. So the population just, just goes like this. It's exponential, right? So at a certain point you have a, enough, in our case enough to go and feed people, and then we take those and we induce them to muscle and fat. So then the muscle, we have separate pork muscle and pork fat, and then we put them together and then we make a sausage out of it. So then you, you have one uh, cell proliferation of muscle and one of fat, and then there's a induction that happens to me? Well, the, so the stem cells are what you proliferate. Yes, yes. So, so when we have this like exponential curve, these are all stem cells. Yes. Stem cells, and then we have like a giant giant mass of stem cells, yes. and then we divide them, and then we induce this one to muscle and this one to fat. Oh, induce it to muscle, yeah. induce it to fat. Yeah. How do you make one muscle? Mm -hmm. How do you, how does one change uh, So the, the growth factors again. Oh, grow, oh right. interesting, so then you add the muscle growth factor exactly. and versus the fat one. Precisely, yep. And then once they grow for how much X amount of time yep. longer, then you maybe mix them like a pork sausage gets mixed. Right, exactly. And then yeah. you put it a lining like a... Like yep, a so we had a, a, a you know, vegan casing in our case. So we worked with a, a chef. Uh, so he has, he's, he's actually a butcher here in San Francisco and 20 years of experience in butchery and making sausages. Yeah. And so he contacted us. He said like, hey, I'm, I'm really excited about what you're doing. It's amazing for, for the future, for my children. Like yeah. I've been in this industry for a long time and I see that it's going downhill as far as quality and sustainability, and I want to be a part of what you're doing. Yeah. So he approached us, I was like, it was amazing. Sweet. Yeah, right? Uh, so then we iterated on recipes, and just, he, he was amazing. It just has uh, just like a, a knack and a feel of like, okay, you're more, more or less of et cetera, right? Yeah. So just like trying new, he has a, veg, a vegetable broth he put in there and some really sweet spices. Um, sweet as in like really nice spices, not sweet per se, savory spices. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then we, essentially culminated that in the pork sausage tasting, which we had September 17th, uh, and that was for 40 people in a brewery in downtown San Francisco. Whoa. Yep. Um, simulation would like to come to the next. Uh, what? Uh, so the next one, uh, you're right. So we, we, we try to have those according to like milestones, right? So everybody's like, when's the next one? The next one's like the next milestone. So Sweet. we, uh, on the stage, for instance, we said that we've eliminated FBS from our stem cell culture media. What's and from FBS? our FBS? Oh, sorry, fetal bovine serum. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, Fetal bovine serum is the major component in cell culture media uh, for most companies. And essentially it's, it's quite frankly, as bad as it sounds. You are taking placental fluid from uh, a cow, right? And so that, the reason you take it is it has a lot of growth factors yeah. and it has a lot of nutrients and it's a really easy way to make a cell grow. Now, you, there, there have been FBS free formulations in human tissue engineering. Okay. So a lot of our technology okay. is a derivative of human tissue engineering. And, and it kind of makes sense that it's, well, I should say that in the human tissue engineering context, it, for instance, you'll, if you have like a heart, faulty heart muscle, I may take a biopsy of it, put it in a flask, grow it out, and then put it back inside of you. And so the chance of rejection is very low, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then if I go and spend $100,000 doing it and it fixes you up and you live for the next 20 years, you're happy to pay that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot of downward pressure on the protocols and the recipes, if you will, to, to improve these, these uh, cells, like the, the media for the cells. Now, if we go and take this same recipe that we're using for human tissue and put it over here, our goals are very different. We want to make a huge amount of very low cost yeah. uh, meat, right? And the difference also is in the functionality, right? So if I go and put that heart muscle inside of you, I expect that it's going to last in there for 20 years, right? You have to have the signaling pathways and you have to have the nerves, nerve endings and it has to beat like a heart for you know, 20 years to keep you alive or longer. You'll, you'll live a long time, so a long time, right? Whereas in our case, how long is it going to last? You're going to eat it. It's going to taste good. It's going yeah. to be healthy. And it's out of your system in a couple of days, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, what we say is the functionality is different. Yes. So we're making a higher, higher volume, a lower cost, and a lower functionality than human tissue engineering. And then, so do <clears throat> all of the clean meat companies, are they all using FBS? Or? I, I don't know of one that didn't start using FBS, right? Okay. So this is kind of a holy grail for the industry is you'll, you'll start using that. And so, and so I should say that okay. there are FBS reformulations in human tissue engineering. They're very expensive, right? And that's, the, again, the whole different yeah. market, different yeah. product market. Yeah. Um, so in, in our FBS 
despite it being expensive, it's actually cheaper than a lot of custom formulations without FPS. And then we take it out afterward. That's the, the process as you have well, it the, as a growth factor and then you take it out? So, so the process actually is we are making a custom formulation without FPS. So we, we've, yes, you we've removed it entirely. And we use like okay. other factors you do in there. Have first to learn about the Precisely. process. Oh, interesting. Right. Yep. Oh, you, oh, got it. So then it gets completely removed from all processes. Yep. Um, yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, so we're very much in the research okay. phase. Cool. Uh, so in the beginning of the research phase, just understanding how our cells behave and, the, and to kind of define our protocols, we, we use those. Uh, but very quickly during like our four months of IndieBio, we remove them from the stem cell and the fat cell culture media. And so we're two out of three, and we are removing it from the muscle cells now. So in a very short time, we'll have that. We'll have an entirely fetal bovine serum-free formulation. And then, um, what what was we were, we were going to? T we were talking about the next milestone, mm. and that's where yeah. So tell us about that next. Milestone. Well, that will be the next milestone. Oh, right, so FBS free. FBS. Yeah. Oh, cool. And yeah, then yeah. that is. <clears throat> From September was the last milestone. When is this next one? Uh, so we think it's it's we say a couple months. So we're and that is yeah. So it should January -ish. be January. Yeah, hopefully this year, or late early next year, late next this year, whole, late this year, early next year. Yeah. I have some awesome hospitality and food industry people that okay. would that would love to help produce a really solid event for 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 you guys. So let's let's explore you heard that. It here first. You yeah. heard it, you heard it here first. Yeah, I'm looking at you. You guys know who I'm thinking about. Um, so okay, so let's so we'll explore that. And okay, so what does this? So now you you have a, a vegan lining, and you're putting the uh, the proliferated and inducted mixture into the, the pork yep. casing, into the vegan lining casing. So then from there, then is there another sort of proprietary step that you're taking in order for it to taste, to touch all the senses of, mm. to make it as close to, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a great question and I, to kind of put in context, the first time I tried our culture meat, it was uh, the week before the tasting, and we had bought some pork at the store uh, and ground it up. Interesting. So that we could kind of compare it to what we were yeah. making, right? We wanted to make sure that we were making the same thing. Did and so you it was blind test it for yourself. Okay. So we had this busy kitchen, right? Okay. Uh, we had the containers of, of our meat and then the, the the cell culture meat, and then also the the stuff from the store. And the chef was cooking stuff up, and and so he handed me something, and I ate it. I'm like, okay, that's bacon. I recognize that. So uh, can I try the stuff we made? He said, that is the stuff you made. I said, oh. And I was like, well, that's just bacon. Right? So it's not that it tasted like bacon, it was bacon, right? So I've eaten a lot of bacon in my That's life. so cool yeah. that yeah, you were like, can I taste the stuff we made? He's yeah, like, that is what That is it, yeah. exactly, right. So, and that's kind of like put in context, it's like the, you're saying like, well, what do you have to do next to make it taste like bacon? Like, no, it, it's bacon. It, it does it's already. It's muscle, pork muscle, and pork muscle, and pork, pork, pork muscle, pork fat, yeah. mix it together, it's bacon. Well, that's what bacon is, right? It's just like ground up bacon. Good work. Yeah. I love hearing that because yeah, then it's, cool. it was that quick, you mm -hmm. know, it's that quick and it, it, you know, it'll be interesting, you know, those commercials from back in the day when they were trying to be like, can you tell the difference between Coke or Pepsi? Right. And yeah, yeah. So it, I think it's time for that in um, the clean meat era. Like it could be yeah, yeah. like we are ready to make those commercials yeah. for you. So let's let's make let's make it happen. <laughs> All let's, right. Let's make those commercials those, happen. Those could be good commercials. Yeah, those would be hella um, good commercials. Because yeah. and and then let's release the actual transparent numbers mm -hmm. as well of how many people um, uh, couldn't 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 distinguish between the sure. difference that they that they that they were like I I don't I just tried both and I have yeah. no idea or I thought this and that they call it maybe they call it right so let, well that'd be super fun yeah. to to it's, be able to do it's actually part of our seed phase like it's love it the part of the deployment of funds is to do that very thing yeah it's exciting yeah, yeah. okay so um, mm. w deployment of funds. What, uh, so doing some of the taste testing, um, um, blind taste testing, what else are you doing with the deployment of funds? Right, so we have a bunch of science milestones and then some business and product milestones, right? So the science milestones are very much around how do we r remove FPS entirely, right? Uh, and then increase the cell density and then, dis and then mm. hone in on the exact protocol that we're gonna be using. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have like a bunch of protocols that that give various benefits, right? Kind of, it's like a 
it's like a trade-off. This one's good at this, this one's, this one's good at this, not so good at this. Uh, so we're gonna be deciding on which one that is. Uh, also on our bioreactor or cultivator design. And, and then also very much on safety. We, we, believe on, we believe in obviously keeping the public safe. So right now we have toxicologists looking at our meat. Right, so we want to we want to police ourselves, if you will. We want to make totally. sure that when this comes to market, that people don't have any fear. Exactly. Uh, this is like no, no, we've tested this, yeah. so we're we're doing that as well. Nice. Um, and on the the business side, uh, it's very much okay. The the formulation of the product, for, we'll say like the business slash product side, it's very much the formulation of the product, uh, and then who's eating it, right? Where are they eating it, and then what do they care about? Like who, what do they want to see in in um, this meat that we're making? Because we are decoupled from an animal. Think about it, there's only so much that you can re-engineer an animal in order to make it taste different or textured or whatever, right? Uh, there's only so much I can engineer a pig mm -hmm. to give me a different taste. In our case, we control the entire system. We control everything that goes into the cells, yeah. everything that goes out of cells, and the environment, right? You're about to be able to do so much more. Exactly, yeah. right. So we can start, you know, we, we, we can feed it whatever, amino acids, fatty acids, minerals, etc., to give it the, the, the type of taste that people want. So we can actually start at humans' perception of meat. Why do we enjoy meat? What is it about it? And we can work backwards and make our meat meet that and then exceed that, right? So what are the new and interesting tastes that, you, that would be amazing? So right now we're actually speaking with chefs, food scientists, molecular gastronomists to say like, what's, what's actually difficult for you to do in a kitchen, for instance? Uh, and then can we go and actually do that to ourselves? and then you don't have to in the kitchen. You, it's actually, it comes out that way, tasting a certain way. Uh, so yeah. these are the type of things we're working on also during seed. Sweet, so. Okay, so you are scaling up and can you describe this um, cell density within mm -hmm. scaling up? Right. So <clears throat> how, how does one handle cell density, how do you get into those big bioreactors? Like how does one finally start growing this by like the tons? Mm -hmm. How does one do that? Well, the, there's a scale up process. So right now we're at the, you know, right now we're at the pre-seed phase. So we have Indie Bio's money uh, and essentially they give you a certain chunk of cash and they say you have four months, go do something, mm -hmm. right? And so we've taken part of that to invest in developing a proprietary bioreactor, which, which as I said Whoa. in the presentation, has 10 times the density. So you can grow 10 times the cell than the industry standard. Uh, we think that's pretty important. Yeah. So then it's a matter of, okay, like, and this is obviously at a smaller level, but during the seed phase, then we start to scale that up. And so it's, you, you scale it up by, by different discrete steps, right? So you, you may go one liter to five liters to 20 liters, et cetera, right? Yeah. So, and this okay. is, you know, okay. I'm a chemical engineer, so this is kind of my background, right? So like, as you go up, you get different forces, right? You get different fluid dynamic forces, That's you right. get different heat and mass transfer forces, um, or heat and mass transfer, we'll say. And so that affects the cells differently. And so you have to go at each discrete point and you have to test the cells. So that is that scale process. Yeah, wow, I love all those variables you were listing because it definitely showcases the sheer complexity of everything that's going mm -hmm. on. Now, what, what, what is, what did you put in the bioreactor that made it so that it had 10 times cell density? What do we put in there? Uh, well, it's still How the same. How you make it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's, okay. that's well, the that's proprietary part. proprietary. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you asked because I can't tell, <laughs> tell you, you it's proprietary, right? Um, but yeah, that's patentable, so we will be filing patents on that, Great. and then you'll be able to read about it uh, yeah. in our, in our when patent filing. it's successfully right. yep. yeah, issued. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, okay, then what what are, because you, okay, you, uh, completely no FBS, completely no FBS. Um, um, what were the other parts of the scale-up process that you were just describing with the seed money that are, that are gonna happen? The, the scale-up process? Toxicology. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, okay, so making sure there's um, no, no toxicity. Right. Um, well, and no, yeah, what are the, what were the, the other ones? Uh, so we talked about the, let's see, the, the decision on cell lines, for instance. We also talked about the removing FPS, the cell density, uh, toxicology, and then the, the bioreactor design or the cultivator design. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay. And then we, awesome. we also talk about like how to scale that in a facility. So it's not just, yes. it's not just how does, the, how does the, the bioreactor look, but then also what's the facility that makes it, right? So you have to kind of design that. Uh, so we're, and, and that's not something we're going to be building at seed. Uh, we will be designing that, right? Yeah. So that when we move on to series A, then we, and then that 
I noted the brew pub experience. So once we yes yeah. So there's a lot of people that can't eat pig mm -hmm. kosher mm -hmm. peeps. So that's they can can they eat. This? It's an interesting question. Uh, so it, it so we have spoken with rabbis and we've kind of like read about what, what they think. And it's kind of, right now it's just kind of divided. Some people say, yeah, obviously you can. And then some people say, nope, you can't. So uh, it's a great question. Because it still came from the stem cells of a pig. Uh, there's that, yep. And yep. then there's the other one, which is like, oh, the pig's not being touched or harmed mm -hmm. at all, so we can eat it. Right. So it really depends on, uh, you know, how you interpret. Interesting. Yeah. The interpretations. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, um, 60% of all pork is consumed in Asia. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean from the calculations of sustainability? Do we know? Like, Oh, as, as far as is art yeah. better than, yeah, I mean, there are, yeah. yeah so Univers University of Oxford uh, released a study recently. There've been a bunch of studies on life cycle analyses. Um, so for instance, um, I think the latest numbers would be, we will be using 99% less land uh, we'll be using 96% less water, 95% um, less greenhouse gases. And on the energy side, that's, that's probably where it's not quite, like it's, we're, we're better, but we're not like 99% better, right? So we'd be, uh, latest estimates be like 65% better or something like that, on right? Energy. Yeah, cool. so cool. uh, energy-wise, yeah. Whoa. So across the board, there's, yeah. there's no metric where we're worse than yeah. an industrial animal agriculture. Yeah, and those are, big numbers <clears throat> on land and water mm -hmm. and also just uh, yeah, th there seems to be more and more that's pointing towards uh, eating stressed animals causing severe disease within yep. humans yep. so um, having the opportunity to 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 have bi massive bioreactors let's let's get this around the world right let's get this around the world and uh, and get the taste tests around the world yeah um, as quickly as possible um, any last thoughts about what's going on with New Age? Well, I mean, the, the thing we like to keep bringing up is that we can make meat that's tastier, healthier, and more sustainable, right? So it, it, at the end of the day, customers will vote based on, is it better? Is it better meat, right, for me? Um, so in that, in that context, I kind of like touched on the fact that it's going to be tastier because we can make it tastier. Uh, and they're also healthier, they're, they're just things you get out of the box, right? So for free, when we make this, you won't be getting any listeria, E. coli, salmonella, right? Uh, so right now we have traditional meat and we kind of treat it uh, in, in the kitchen as kind of this toxic substance. Like if you put it on a cutting board and you cut it, you gotta make sure you wash that thing really well yeah. before you cut anything else because you may get sick. Think about that, like that's, yeah. why is that? Well, there's a lot of bacteria in there, right? So you get that for free. You also, on the public health side, we're not feeding 80% of the antibiotics that we use to keep ourselves alive to animals who aren't sick, which create antibiotic resistant superbugs and 23,000 Americans die every year from antibiotic resistant infections that's right point, yeah. yeah it's a lot two million people get sick two million Americans yeah, yeah. get sick right that's just America we're feeding the animals antibiotics then we're eating the animals exactly yeah and then the animals themselves like I would like to say that if our if our super villain creating a wanting to create a super bug I couldn't do better than industrial animal agriculture yeah that's right? right like it's you literally put all the same type of animal together in a very cramped and dirty environment and you give them most of them are still healthy and you, and you give them antibiotics and that creates antibiotic resistant superbugs. Yeah. And then you put them in contact with humans so it can transfer, transfer humans. It's a terrible, it's a, it's, it's a system designed to, to create these superbugs and we see that. We see yeah. over and over again like antibiotics of last resort. There are unfortunately pig farms in the US and China that are feeding these antibiotics of last resort. The ones that keep us alive, when I say that the last resort, they're the ones that keep us alive uh, to pigs in order to make them fatter in order to, and because they're in, in dangerous conditions. And as a result, now there are antibiotic resistant infections that kill people. They come into the hospital and no antibiotics for, work on them and they die. So we're, we're gonna fix that. Oh, <laughs> so that's a heavy note. That's a, that's a Sorry heavy about note. That. Well, okay, maybe we then, but that's a very important mm -hmm. note. Um, maybe we <clears throat> just briefly on the way out, just talk about the first strategic steps to getting it into grocery outlets nationwide mm -hmm. and worldwide. How does that happen? Sure. Or does it directly sell through newagemeats.com? You know, like, ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, skip the, yeah. skip the check out our website. Check, uh, <laughs> Uh, so we, Links our first, bio. yeah, yeah. Our, our first will be in restaurants. So we, food service restaurants. 
Um, and that is because, as I said earlier, our technology is right now a derivative of human tissue engineering and is expensive. So we are the whole, you know, my whole presentation earlier was ways to drop the cost. And so we're going to be dropping the cost. Uh, and so the first we're going to be, we're going to, we follow what we call the impossible model, right? Impossible yeah. foods model. Yeah. So impossible did a really, really good job at first going, they had a higher end product and they went into restaurants first. And as they reached economies of scale, they were able to drop the price down. And then they move into like White Castle now, right? So. Oh, they did? They did, right. <laughs> you seem. Horrified and delighted at the same time. I feel yeah. I feel incredible that White Castle adopted it, yeah. and I also feel incredible that how could they have possibly gotten the price down to mm -hmm. so? Yeah, that's insane. Right. And so we don't just talk about we're going to do the impossible model. What we actually are one of our advisors was employee number eight in Impossible Foods, and then one of our other contractors like did the rollout in Impossible uh, in that's certain great, markets. Right. So great. we're like, okay, we we're gonna. We're not just giving lip service to the idea. Like we're actually we have the right people on board to do Whoa. that. Whoa. Yeah, because I believe Impossible started with like a twenty dollar burger at the. Yeah, it was it was yeah. really expensive to begin. And with. then now it's at White Castle level. Yeah. Wow. So that seems to be a similar model. So mm -hmm. so and then and so then eventually the rollout would be through like a a, a national like chains of yeah, stores. Yeah, definitely could be. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but but it's also grocery. Is that another? Definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely so that's grocery. and that's down the road because we one we want to be branded. We want to make our own branded products. Yes, right? Yes. And the reason is is because these are different. They're they're uh, they're from cell culture. And they have all those benefits that I said, right? So they're better for the environment, they're better for your health, they're better for animals. And so we want customers to be able to choose that. We want them to be able to see that. So we don't want to make a commodity product because a commodity product will just be the same as what already exists, right? 95% um, of pigs, for instance, are factory farmed. Uh, so from, and then 99.9% .9 of chickens are factory farmed, right? So if we're making this cell culture media with all these better, you know, all these benefits, then we want you to be able to choose that. So we brand them in the restaurants, and then when we move to grocery stores, they'll be branded there as well. So yep. people will be able to choose that. Yes, yes. Choose for their health, choose for their family, choose, choose for the animals, choose for the planet. And it's tastier. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I was just thinking about some really funny branding things. I don't know, like happy pigs or something on your, on your brand, like New Age Meats with like happy pigs yeah. or something. Like <laughs> Happy frolicking pigs, pigs yeah. or something something interesting like that brian what a freaking pleasure this has been yeah. thank you so much for coming i've on enjoyed the show it thanks and, for having and me and yeah. teaching us about your building and cool. congr huge congratulations thanks very much yeah thank yeah. you it's been cool yeah.